Hello everyone, this is Professor Jimenez and we will see today the capacitance to pulse strain converter using a linear charging circuit. In this uh, circuit, we are using a constant current source to, um, to send that current to this uh, capacitive transducer, CX. Um, in another video, we saw the, the constant current generator using the flip-flop or the, latch, the set reset latch made of these three NAND gates and one and two and, and three. So now we will uh, apply this circuit. We will connect it to more gates to control the, to generate and control the latch pulse the uh, reset poles and uh, frequency output, which are necessary to feed a, three, uh, a digital counter. The counter can be a, a three digit, four digit, but um, in another video, we will see that counter. So uh, in this uh, stage of the design, once, uh, once uh, you have here, uh, transducer, which is, it can be a humidity sensor, a capacitive humidity sensor. You press the push button and you will get a pulse on the Q output and that pulse will be proportional to the value of CX. In a previous lesson, of course, we in the previous lesson, we saw that we will get from this circuit that we will get this pulse, this period, uh, in the period of, on the output Q, the Q output, and in, in the same period with negative logic in the not Q output, okay? So now we, we are adding, we are adding this part, and once the, uh, the Q goes from high to low logic, we have here an edge detector, and this edge detector is a, um, detects the falling edge of the signal, of the Q signal. So when the signal ends the T period, uh, this one sends a large pulse. But first, when Q goes too high, <coughs> this Q output enables this, uh, this um, oscillator. And this oscillator made of uh, N4 is, um, is, a, is an oscillator that doesn't have a delay because with this potentiometer, you adjust the voltage for the capacitor, you adjust it to a voltage equal to Bt negative. And Bt negative is uh, normally two volts, 1.8 through 2.2.1 .2 volts. Um, so once you adjust this to equ equal to the Bt minus, the capacitor will hold that voltage. So this uh, logic oscillator with that has no delay, no startup delay, will be ready to oscillate as soon as the Q output goes high. So when the Q output goes high, it generates a frequency. And when the Q output stops, when the Q output goes low, the this disables the gated oscillator and stops the frequency. So once the counter has a, a number, a digital counting here, the counter needs a latch to store that uh, reading. And then after a few milliseconds, it requires a reset pulse to clear the counter to all the zeros, to have it ready uh, for the new reading, for a new reading. Uh, a new reading will be the one that you will get when you press the push button again. So every time you, pre you press the push button, you get a frequency, a, a pulse strain, after the pulse strain is generated, yeah, at the when Q goes low, you get a, this uh, charging or this uh, transient pulse in this point, which is the the voltage across capacitor C two, and the NAND gate generates a positive pulse, a transient positive digital pulse. When this pulse, uh, the latch ends at the re at the falling edge of that signal, uh, capacitor C three generates this new analog voltage and then generates the reset. 
So they are in sequence. First is the latch, when the latch ends, um, you get the reset. And first, uh, of course, first you get the frequency, the frequency stops, then you get a latch and reset. So in R3, C2, R, R4, C3, those are the, the value of those components. Um, I left them without any value, but mm, because you can adjust them to, the, to your needs. And most, uh, the most uh, common values are within 4.7K for R3. 4.7k up to 20k. C2 will be 0.01 microfarads. It has to be a mylar capacitor or ceramic. C3 it has to be a 0.001 mylar capacitor, and R4 has to be within within 4.7k up to 10k. So, and those are the values. So this will be an experiment that all of you in class will have to tested using the scope to to see the Q the the signal on this on this point the signal on this point and you can also see the latch and reset and the and the pulse strain generated by FO the frequency here must be adjusted according to the number of pulses you are expecting or you are willing to generate for example if you have a here a transducer that has uh, let's say 100 microfarads and uh, you can generate here 100 pulses or 1000 and you have a, a transducer that that has for example um, 100 or let's say 1000 picofarads and uh, you can adjust this for 1000 pulses so that way you can you can adjust it by putting here on RA5 another a potentiometer and you substitute RA5 for a poten by a potentiometer but you have to place here a 1k series resistor just to protect uh, the potentiometer in, in case you reach the zero value so you you adjust this frequency this will be the topic of another video lecture okay so and this is the capacitance to pulse strain converter. And that way, if you put here, as I said, uh, any type of capacitor, capacitive transducer, you will get a digital reading. So you can adjust it according to your scale. Uh, and the, you can adjust this oscillator, this gated oscillator, which has no delay to make it more uh, accurate. Okay, the NAND gates used here are the 74HC132, or you can use the classical CD4093. And BDD, it will be uh, 5.0 volts. The current here, you can adjust it to 1 milliamp, 0.1, depending on what, uh, what is the range of your transducer. Okay, thank you for your time. That's all. Bye.